In the late 1880s, the United States Navy's senior commanders began to plan for the possibility of a conflict with the European naval power, eventually coming to the conclusion that a force of both short- and long-range battleships would be necessary to defend the country. Congress agreed to begin modernizing the Navy and authorized three small vessels, the ironclad battleship Texas and the armored cruisers Maine and New York. Three further ships, the Indiana class, were authorized in 1890. These were to be the first installment of short-range battleships to be the Navy's plans. The ships proved it to be disappointments in service as they were badly overweight upon completion. There were low freeboard hampered operations at sea and they handled poorly. They were nevertheless the first modern battleships for the American fleet. Oregon was 351 feet 2 inches long overall and had a beam of 69 feet 3 inches and a draft of 24 feet. She displaced 10,288 long tons as designed and up to 11,688 long tons at full load. The ship was powered by two shaft triple expansion steam engines rated at 9,000 indicated horsepower and four coal fired fire tube boilers generating a top speed of 15 knots. She had a cruising radius of 5,640 nautical miles at a speed of 10 knots. As built, she was fitted with a heavy military mast. This was later supplemented by a stern cage mast in 1910-1911. through 1911. She had a crew of 32 officers and 441 enlisted men, which increased to a total of 560... 586 to 636 officers enlisted. The ship was armed with a main battery of four 14 inch 330 millimeter 35 caliber main guns in two twin gun turrets on the center line, one forward and one aft. The secondary battery consisted of eight 8 inch 203 millimeter 35 caliber guns which were placed in four twin wing turrets. These were supported by a battery of six 6 inch 150 millimeter 40 caliber guns in a casemate battery at midships. For close range defense against torpedo boats, she carried 20 6 pounder guns and 6 1 pounder guns in individual mounts. As was standard for capital ships of the period, Oregon carried 18-inch 457mm torpedo tubes in above-water mounts, though the number is unclear according to Conway's All the World's Fighting Ships and the United States Navy's Dictionary of American Naval Fighting Ships, she was fitted with six tubes, though the naval historian Norman Fredman states that she was ordered with seven but completed with only five. Oregon's main armor belt was 18 inches or 457 millimeters thick over the magazines and the machinery spaces and was reduced to four inches or 102 millimeters thick at the bow and stern. The main battery gun turrets had 17 inches or 432 millimeters thick sides and the supporting barbettes had the same thickness or of armor plate on their exposed sides. The 8-inch turrets had 6 inches of armor plating, and the casemate battery had 5 inches, or 125 millimeter. The conning tower had 10 inches, or 254 millimeter thick sides. Congress authorized three Indiana-class battleships on the 30th of June, 1890, and in the authorization specified that one of the ships was to be built on the west coast of the United States. Therefore, after the first two vessels, Indiana and Massachusetts, were awarded to William Cramp and Sons in Philadelphia, the contract for the third was given to the Union Iron Works in San Francisco. Her keel was laid down on the 19th of November, 1890, 
and her completed haul was launched on the 26th of October, 1893. After completing fitting out, she was commissioned into the fleet on the 15th of July, 1896. She was then completed sea trials as part of the Pacific Squadron, where she served for the next year. On the 15th of February, 1898, the armored cruiser Maine exploded in Havana, Cuba, during a period of rising tensions between the United States and Spain, which possessed Cuba as part of the colonial empire. Oregon, which was in dry dock at the time, was refloated the next day and placed under the command of Captain Charles Edgar Clark. Initial reports have blamed a Spanish naval mind, and as the threat of war began, the two countries grew. Oregon was ordered to steam to the east coast of the United States to strengthen the Northern Atlantic Squadron. She steamed south to San Francisco, California to load ammunition on the 9th of March, departing, it on the, departing 10 days later for the long voyage around South America a distance of some 1,400 nautical miles. Oregon reached at Cala, Peru on the 4th of April, where she took on a fresh load of coal before continuing the journey. Clark decided to skip the scheduled coaling stop in Vernasco, Chile, electing to proceed to the Strait of Milingon directly, which the ship reached on the 16th of April. A severe storm complicated her passage through the hazardous waters and she was forced to drop anchor overnight to avoid running aground. She reached Penta Arenales, Chile, the next morning. There, she joined the gunboat Mercedita, which was also en route to join the North Atlantic Squadron. After both ships replenished their coal stocks there, they went to underway for Rio de Janeiro, Brazil on the 21st of April. False rumors of a Spanish torpedo boat in the area kept the ship's gun crews at their stations. The ships reached Rio de Janeiro on the 30th of April, where they learned of the state of war between the United States and Spain. They departed on the 4th of May, stopped briefly in Salvador, Bahia, Brazil, and then cold in Barbados on the 18th of May. Oregon arrived in Jupiter, Florida on the 28th of May, where she met other elements of the North Atlantic Squadron. In the course of the voyage, which lasted 66 days, Oregon had traveled some 14,000 nautical miles. One long-term result of this trip, which had received extensive press coverage, was public pressure for the construction of a Panama Canal to shorten the further transatlantic repositioning. Oregon sailed to Key West on the 26th of May, where she joined the rest of the North Atlantic Squadron under the command of Rear Admiral William T. Simpson. By that time, the Flying Squadron under the Commodore Winfield Scott's Shelley's command had located the Spanish squadron that had sailed to Cuba at the start of the war and had blockaded it in Santo de Cuba. The Spanish squadron was commanded by Rear Admiral Petco Carvuti y Tipoti and consisted of the armored cruisers Infanta Maria Torosa, Cristobal Colono, Vincia, and Amerta Cuando and the destroyers at Polanto and Furo. Oregon arrived off the tent port on the 1st of June and over the course of the month took part in bombards of the Spanish positions around the city and helped to maintain the blockade. On the 8th at 08.45 on the 3rd of July Serva sorted with his flagship aboard Infinito Martoso, followed by Cristobal Colono, Vistina, and Almerto Ocanto, and the two destroyers bringing up the rear, 
The Spaniards cleared the roadstead at 0935. Lucky for the Spanish, New York Simpson's flagship was out of position at the time, and Massachusetts was replenishing her coal at Guantanamo Bay. Lookouts aboard the armored cruiser Brooklyn spotted Siversa approaching and fired one of her guns to warn the other American ships, which quickly ordered their crews to general quarters and initiated the Battle of Santo de Cuba. As the Spanish ships attempted to break out to the west, Silver charged at Brooklyn with Infant Maria Terso to delay the American pursuit and give his other ships time to escape. The Spanish coastal batteries also contributed their fire in the first stage of the battle, but had little effect. Oregon took the lead in the ensuing chase as she was the only large American ship which had good steam pressure when the battle began. The cruiser Brooklyn had uncoupled two over four engines, which could still achieve 17 knots, and it was right behind her. Heavy American gunfire had set into Marl Theresa on fire, and fearing a magazine explosion, Silver ordered her to run aground at 1025. Amirta Condoros, captain, issued similar instructions five minutes later, as his ship, too, was badly or burned badly. Visa was also forced ashore shortly thereafter, striking her colors to surrender at 1036. Meanwhile, the two Spanish destroyers had also been badly damaged by the American battleships. Indiana had nearly cut Pluton in half with a 13-inch shell, forcing it to run aground where she exploded, and Fjord had been salvaged by organs. Iowa's and Indiana's secondary batteries, leading her to her crew to surrender to the gunboat at Gulch Girl. Only at Cristobal Colonel, which had a six nautical mile lead at that point, was still running westward. Oregon and Texas followed Brooklyn as they chased at Cristobal Colonel. The Americans slowly caught up to the fleeing British cru or Spanish cruiser and engaged her at long range. Cristobal Colonna, which had been fitted with her main armament before being sent to Cuma, could not return fire, and her commander realized his hopeless position, and at 1320, he turned it to shore and struck his flag, indicating his surrender, and the crew scuttled the ship. Oregon was not hit in the action, owing to large part to the poor quality of Spanish shooting. With the construction of Silver Squadron and American success in Cuba and the Philippines, Spain sued for peace on the 17th of July, and the war ended on the 12th of August with the Treaty of Paris. After the war, Oregon steamed to New York for an overhaul, after which she was assigned to the Ostetic Squadron in October. She reached Manila in the Philippines on the 18th of March, 1899, and operated there for the next year during the Philippine-American War. During this period, she assisted with the blockade of Manila and Wugan Gulf and supported the capture of the city of Vigna. On the 13th of February, 1900, Oregon departed for a visit to Japan and lasted until May. When she steamed to Hong Kong, by that time, the Boxer Rebellion had broken out in Queen China, and the ship was ordered to steam to Kulk, China on the 23rd of June to enforce the eight National Alliance forces that were gathering there. While passing through the Bolha Strait on the 28th of June, she struck an uncharted rock running hard aground. She remained on the rock for a week before being refloated on the 5th of July. After completing temporary repairs, she steamed to Cure Japan to be dry docked for permanent repairs on the 17th of July. Oregon got underway again on the 29th of August for operations along the coast of China. She patrolled off the mouth of the Yangtze River 
and was then stationed at Wonsong in Shanghai, China until the 5th of May 1901. That day, she departed to return to the United States for a refit, selling it first to Yokohama, Japan, and then to Honolulu, Hawaii. From there, she steamed to San Francisco, arriving there on the 12th of June. She then steamed north to Puget Sound Naval Yard, where she reached it on the 6th of July. She remained there for a year and a half before being before departing in early 1903 for China. She arrived in Hong Kong on the 18th of March and other uh, over the course of the next three years. She served on the Autisk Squadron, visiting ports in China, Japan, and the Philippines. The period passed uneventfully for Oregon, and she returned to the United States in February of 1906. She was decommissioned in Puget Sound on the 27th of April. The ship remained out of service for the next five years. She received a fairly minimal modernization during her period in reserve, which included the installation of a cage main mast. She also had her swell firing 6 inch guns removed and a battery of 12 3 inch 76mm quick firing guns was installed to improve her defense against torpedo boats, which had grown in size and power since Oregon's construction. These were placed in single mounts, with four in an open battery atop the deck house amidships, one on each 8 inch turret and two on the 13-inch turrets apiece. Her small size and cramped decks prevented the more thorough modernization of her superstructure that the later American pre-dreadnought battleships received at this time. On the 29th of August, 1911, Oregon was recommissioned, but she remained again assigned to the reserve fleet until October, when she got underway for San Diego, California. Over the next two years, she cruised off the west coast but saw no events of note. She was placed in ordinary on the 9th of April, 1913, in Bergenhorn, Washington, before being formally returned to the reserve fleet on the 16th of September, 1914. Though she remained in partial commission, she was fully decommissioned again on the 2nd of January 1915 to participate in the Panama Pacific International Exposition in San Francisco. She was again reduced to the reserve fleet on the 11th of February 1916, remaining there until the 7th of April 1917. Though she was still in partial commission, this period was spent in San Francisco, and on the 7th of April, she was once again returned to full commission, the United States having entered World War I the day before. She saw no active duty during the war, but she was used to escort troop ships during the force for the Syrian expedition that intervened in the Russian Civil War in 1918. After returning from Russia, Oregon was decommissioned again on the 12th of June, 1919, before being recommissioned briefly from the 21st of August to the 4th of October. During this period, she hosted President Woodrow Wilson during a review of the Pacific Fleet when it arrived in Seattle, Washington. She was assigned to the hall number of BB-3 on the 17th of July, 1920, when the Navy adopted the system. Beginning in 1921, a group of naval enthusiasts embarked on a campaign to have Oregon preserved as a museum ship to be based somewhere in her namesake state. The Washington Naval Treaty, signed in 1922, required Oregon to be demilitarized and she was accordingly disarmed in 1923, being pronounced compliant with the terms of the treaty on the 24th of January, 1924. 
she was listed on the Naval Vessel Register as an unclassified relic. The Navy loaned the ship to Oregon in June of 1945, and she was mourned in Portland and restored as a museum vessel. Oregon was redesignated with the hull number IX-22 on the 17th of February 1941, after the United States entered World War II. With the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December 1941, the Navy determined that Oregon ought to be sold for scrap to free resources for the war effort. She was accordingly struck from the Naval Re Vessel Register on the 2nd of November 1942 and was sold to shipbreakers on the 7th of December. In March of 1943, she was towed to Kwama, Washington to be broken up, but after the work it began, the Navy decided that Oregon would be of use during the planned Reconquest of Guam, rescheduled for the middle or mid of 1944, either as a storage hulk or as a breakwater. The Navy requested that the breakers stop after the superstructure had been cleared and her internal fittings and equipment had been removed, and to return her. She was then loaded with ammunition to support the forces that would invade Guam and towed it there as part of the invasion fleet. The vessel remained mourned in Guam through the end of the war in 1945, and for several years thereafter. During this period, on the night of the 14th and 15th of November 1948, Oregon broke free from her mornings during Typhoon Angus and drifted away. After an extensive search, aircraft located the vessel adrift some 500 nautical miles southeast of Guam. The ship was towed back to Guam and remained there until 1956, when, on the 15th of March, she was sold to Massey Supply Corporation, which in turn resold her to EO or EY Sango Company of the Kakasaki, Japan. She was then towed there and broken up. Several parts of the ship remain in Portland. Her military foremast was eradicated in 1956 at the Tom McCall Waterfront Park and her wheel is set out in the collection of the Oregon Historical Society. Both of her funnels also survived, but are not on public display. And that concludes today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you guys didn't learn something today. As for reasons why the organ was chosen for today's video, there were a number of factors that actually went in to uh, making this video and finding exactly a ship that would come down to it. Um, for those of you who do not know, and I guarantee a lot of my viewers or a lot of you guys watching wouldn't know this, but I am actually from Oregon. So I want to do a video on my home state or at least a ship named after my home state. And it was either this or the um, Virginia class attack submarine. And I really didn't want to do anything modern because that's not who I am. I prefer to give the knowledge about the older vessels that started to create the history. So, along with that, um, the organ isn't exactly something that you get that many talk about. Um, just like the battleship, um, or, uh, okay, the battleship Iowa. Not many people talk about her, and no, I'm not talking about the Battleship Iowa BB-63, or BB-61, excuse me. She, the Iowa in question that, I was talk that I'm talking about, it was a very old ship, um, one of the first actual um, heavy gun ships that we actually deployed, and that um, I did talk about in today's video. Um... And just all around, I prefer to look into the older stuff around the world. And with the organ, it does take a lot of effect, especially 
with it having a little bit of sentimental value, um, at least from my perspective. And a lot of my family didn't know about some of the things that are actually still preserved over in Portland. And most of my family have been in Portland in the past, and they didn't know about a lot of this until I had brought this to their attention whenever I started researching for today's video. But enough about that. And um, if you guys did enjoy it, please do go hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I hope you guys did learn something as well. Um, if you did enjoy it, and um, it would be greatly appreciated if you guys would go hit the like button. Um, or hit the dislike button. It's honestly up to you whether or not you liked today's video or you didn't. Um, if you guys have any comments, or if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, feel free to put them down in the comment section below. Especially if you guys have any requests or concerns or something like that that you guys want to get out into the known world. But with that being said, I do thank everybody for tuning in, and I shall see you all in the next video. Peace out.